let us start. Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, Keda. I mean, as everybody, this is a conference, right? Conference of uh, Kubernetes. Uh, we'll be only uh, talking about Kubernetes mostly, right? So uh, I'll not get into what is Kubernetes and all that stuff. We'll just uh, move forward. So uh, I'll just tell you what I'm from. I'm basically a Microsoft MVP and I have a experience of around uh, 12 to 14 years. Uh, and then in cloud, it's around seven to eight years. I've been working in cloud for a very long time. And uh, I have uh, worked from, say, VM to a normal uh, compute engine and then to uh, Kubernetes. Okay, so there are several as and Kubernetes, we came into that. So we had a very huge project which we are where, where we have run some uh, machine learning workload where we have to OCR uh, some of the documents around five crores. Uh, uh, so that was very uh, challenging one. If you started using uh, any other uh, uh, serverless entity, there was some problem with timeouts and other scaling problems because even the serverless wasn't helping us and the cost also was a problem there. What we did was uh, we started working on uh, 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 Kubernetes then. That's the first time we started working on Kubernetes and we thought, okay, let's go and uh, check out uh, what we can do with Kubernetes and how we can use the serverless and also the serverless scaling and also have more control over what uh, uh, compute engine it should run on because in, ca in the case of serverless, right, it, you cannot choose the compute, meaning the GPUs and CPUs and the RAM. It is, it is some pre-configured uh, information that comes with that compute, and then we only have to use whatever that serverless gives you. So the uh, Keda gives you the flexibility to, I mean, Kubernetes gives you the flexibility to run those compute engines, and also Keda helps you out. Elms acts as a package manager for you, and then virtual kubelets will help you to uh, pay only for what you use. So these are the three things which you, which we actually figured out when we are trying to yeah, run a huge machine learning workload, which, uh, which, which when you calculated it was coming around 25 lakhs. And then when you used, a, used a Keda and Elm and the virtual kubelets, it came around uh, somewhere around three and a half to four lakhs where one lakh went on uh, writing logs. Okay, so the uh, the logs that written is by the Kubernetes uh, took a lot more than the actual thing. It is because of certain things we didn't we we did disable we did not disable it. So that is why it is there. But still, yeah, that's the uh, uh, something we just learned after spending a lakh. Okay. To the next slide. My, for some reason, my phone is... Yeah, no, fine. So, uh, so we, uh, agenda is basically a simple agenda. We have a, we'll talk about what is auto-scaling. We talk about what is HPA, which is horizontal port auto-scaler, and why we choose Keda and what is Keda, and also the actual virtual kubelets, and uh, basically the Elm charts and a demo. Okay, so auto scaler. So, so what, basically, auto scaler, right? So, what? Why we need an auto scaler? Basic, uh, cloud by itself is an auto scaling entity, right? So we go to cloud because it can scale a huge amount where we can we will be able to stop our we, we cannot even stop ourselves. Sometimes the scale is so high, we a small mistake we make uh, screws up the whole building. Uh, that is the one of the disadvantage of using auto scaler. Uh, what is auto scaler? Is nothing to ability to add. A computing power to the instance based on the demand. So that's a huge thing. Right? So in, in, initially, when we started uh, our career, we used to have uh, we used to send an email whenever the project comes up, uh, saying that you know what we need a uh, uh, this this GB of RAM, uh, say four GB of RAM, and uh, 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 say twenty GB of hard disk. That's the server we used to use, um, and then it, it will take at least for them to procure a long time. Once our uh, clients started using the app, then we need to actually make sure that uh, we have to mo buy more compute and add more CPUs and RAMs to the already existing server racks. So it used to be a problem because it will always be a problem where we think of giving them more uh, spec and the project might not go that much, or we might uh, end up the other way where we'll give them uh, enough spec, but still the project will be more than what we thought about. Or some bugs, bugs in the code that is actually uh, taking more RAMs and GPUs. That also happens. So the auto scaler is a huge uh, 
uh, gift for us from the cloud where it uh, based on the uh, need it uh, <coughs> compute power is increased and it's it's a basically a smooth handling right you will not even say see the actual compute is being added to the system there is zero configuration we need, we need to do whenever there is a scaling needs or the i the traffic is very high okay so this is the hpa we i want to talk about so this our kubernetes does a auto scaling very very good and very very well uh, and it also does a every 30 seconds there is some metrics api that goes in and then there a replica count can be increased the pods can be increased the number of nodes can be increased and all the other uh, details that with respect to cpu ram node these all can be increased based on the demand the only problem with hpa is if there is a load increase based on the say number of request or number of uh, uh, say queue that they have added to the system there is you cannot do it with hpa meaning uh, once the uh, cpu or the ram reaches certain level the node actually increases to say may I add i may add one or more nodes to the kubernetes it will it will not be based on the actual load that is coming in meaning say uh, say i am getting a 10000 request and i want to be very force and then push that if one once i get 10000 request i want to deploy say 100 pod 100 pods before even it's getting to 10000 uh, 20000 uh, only when the uh, actual kubernetes nodes reaches that 60% uh, say 80% then it will scale to any other uh, metrics that is based on whatever we have configured that is configurable uh, so we'll reduce that to 60 so that we actually see it or once it reaches 20000 it might have become 80 then we will go to one more pod so it is based not based on the load that comes in it's based on the cpu and the metrics that is being used so that's the problem with hpa how, how is that problem being solved by keda is keda acts, uses the hpa and make sure that it counts the events and then scale uses the hpa to increase the number of pods so basically uh, keda and hpa works together the metrics all is uh, it's basic, uh, they need to uh, check the uh, uh, there is the hpa will be added to the uh, keda's uh, pods the keda by itself is one pod which I, which acts as uh, checking the events and then the event will be added to the Uh, hpa so the hpa will probably increase the pods based on the load that comes in okay so if you see the diagram here so when you whenever there is a metrics right so there is a met- keda takes care of the metrics using prometheus or any other uh, 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 namespace sorry uh, on other pods where it when, whenever there is an increase in the uh, load that comes in based on number of requests based on the actual uh, queue uh, queue that queue data that comes in or in kafka or in any other uh, platform there are multiple uh, keda the keda scaler that supported there are n number of keda keda that is something like azure function scaler uh, apache scaler service bus scaler http request scaler so there are multiple scalers that keda supports once that uh, scaler uh, once that scaler knows for that particular scaler if there is huge load it will uh, talk to the horizontal pod auto scaler to increase the number of pods okay so for example i have a ibm mq sorry uh, say i have a rabbit queue and then i know when when it reaches say 10000 queue i want to spin 100 more pods that can be actually configured in keda so keda will take care of that configuration to increase the pods to 10000 okay so so uh, so any any system that needs a runtime scaling or event driven scaling you need to use keda and the keda will take care of the keda will take care of the actual pods that uh, come up okay yeah so keda is basically a event driven auto scaler where the hpa or the horizontal pod scaler cannot do because horizontal pod scaler takes care only in with respect to the uh, metrics of cpu and ram but if you want to increase the uh, metrics or uh, increase your pods based on any events then you should go for keda okay so this is virtual kubelet so another concept that is uh, we were looking into that basically this is in azure and any any other uh, aws or uh, aws but i'm not sure about the gcp platform so how it, how it works is um, so how it works is uh, uh, this kubelet is another uh, uh, pluggable architecture 
which is implemented using kubelet to connect to kubernetes for other apis okay so it also uses the uh, hpa and it uh, takes takes care of uh, increasing the nodes so virtual kubelet is nothing but there'll be an abstract layer over the nodes where those nodes are only run whenever there is a uh, need for it okay so so when you when you take kubernetes right you would have seen in kubernetes uh, you need to have at least one master node and then you can add nodes to it based on uh, uh, based on your needs you can you can just keep one node and then based on auto scale you can actually uh, add nodes okay the problem with nodes is you the cpu metrics it will come down based on some cpu metrics only right so and then you have to pay for that corresponding time the node was up but with case of virtual kubelet you don't have to pay for the node you have to pay for the amount of Hey guys, uh, the, the speaker is facing some uh, issues in his network, so we'll be uh, resuming shortly. Just stay in there. And if you have any questions on uh, so for whatever has been covered so far, please feel free to post it on the chat. We'll definitely take it up. Hey, Karthikeyan, you're on mute. If you're talking, we can see you. you. Know? Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Okay. You can do it. Yeah. Okay, okay, it's fine. Uh, when it got cut, you have any idea? <laughs> okay uh, not really but yeah i can resume maybe you know Check. i think the audience are eager to hear you so it doesn't matter even if you repeat the content we are happy to hear you okay yeah so... I probably can start sharing okay so okay i have no idea when which slide i st stopped is it no <laughs> <laughs> not really okay fine uh all right. Okay. So I'll I'll go with virtual Kubernetes itself. So I was talking about Kubernetes, and then I was talking about. Uh, is there anyone can from the, from the audience can tell me? Hey, hey guys, yeah, you can post it on the chat. So if you remember, that would be really great. Let's see. Required? Somebody asked half a minute ago. Naga Prasad, what are the required configs when starts with gates? Just the three nodes. I can tell you. Yeah, when it got stopped. Where did you it got stopped in the virtual node kubelets or sleep previous slides? Yes, Moment. so Ravi is saying that it's virtual kubelet. It's on virtual okay. kubelet. Yeah. Then it's fine. I didn't lose it. Okay, super. Okay. So I'll just repeat what virtual kubelets are. And uh, virtual kubelets is nothing but a node you okay, fine. So, thanks, Sachin. Uh, so virtual kubelet is nothing. Okay, for example, uh, I have a Kubernetes and then in Kubernetes I am scaling based on my metrics, CPU metrics. And it's going to, uh, if it is 80%, it'll, I'll be adding. So I'll be adding 
one more node okay so when i add one more node say it's it's, it's a one cpu or two cpu node and then uh, then i'm using it for one hour and then scaling down because the matrix has come down to 60% or 80% less than 80% but i'll be uh, paying for what one node one hour and uh, say 4 gb ram right but with virtual cubelet right if i'm going to use uh, say 10 uh, scale in virtual cubelet and i have 10 pods say every pod takes uh, say 0.1 so i'll be paying for uh, so not 0.1 0.01 i'll be paying for only 0.1 nodes and i'm say using a uh, say point one memory of uh, one uh, one gb of uh, my ram so i'll be paying only for one gb of ram so it is like point one com- uh, cpu and one gb of ram so i'll be paying say if, if this uh, node costs 100 bucks i'll be paying only 10 bucks so it is like huge save cost saving right because most of the time when i scale multiple uh, nodes you will not be uh, using the uh, complete node you'll be using only say 60% or 40% of the node and others might be free uh, based on at least the last node will be free the last node will be at least 30 40% free so we'll actually saving lots of cost uh, and then we'll be actually uh, using the cost for more business value adds okay so we'll see how virtual cubelet works basically virtual cubelet sits next to the node it will be an abstract layer of node and it has its own uh, containers operating system pods it's basically a one more deployment it uh, you do that is almost like a node which sits on the master node and it will call the uh, whenever you needs a node uh, 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 if underlying right so underlying in azure i don't know about other uh, cloud cloud friends basically and in underlying uh, virtual cubelet is basically aci it's azure con- container instance it's basically serverless uh, i mean it's hybrid of uh, uh, serverless and kubernetes without even even having a kubernetes okay so uh, it's basically i can tell you aci is with a serverless kubernetes virtual cubelet will connect to an aci and starts pulling those nodes and you will be paying only for the whatever uh, whatever you actually used okay so we uh, so what we thought is so we, until until now we saw what is keda right keda is basically what keda is for something to uh, scale your kubernetes based on the workload meaning event rather than the matrix cpu or ram okay and then virtual kubernetes is nothing but uh, you know uh, it's a basically a kubelet implements the pod and container where you will not be using the complete node or you will not be paying for the complete node you will be just paying for actual usage of the compute 0.1 compute and say 0.1 gb of ram so the qhl cubelet will access an abstract layer. hey uh, kartik no, we don't see your screen if you are sharing yeah i am sharing okay okay because of the refresh i think got closed yes yep perfect perfect so we, we we saw what is keda and we saw what is kubelet and this is elm chart elm chart is nothing but a package manager for kubernetes uh, it's basically on uh, terms of infrastructure as code right whenever you want to write uh, you have your infrastructure as a code elm is the best package best way to 
work in kubernetes most of the people will be knowing about uh, elm and all charts and other stuff i'll i'll just touch touch base the elm and also talk about keda also virtual kubelet so you'll have an understanding of uh, what is all about okay okay fine let's uh, go for a demo that's better So you know how to create a Kubernetes. That should be okay. I'm just gonna show the Azure version of creating Kubernetes. It's basically a click of multiple clicks that you need to do. Why I'm showing this demo is just to make uh, look, make you sure you know. So this is all. You select some uh, sponsorship and all that group, resource group, normal things, blah blah stuff you need to do. Okay. So main concept here is the node pools. So whenever they, you come to node pools, right? You need to enable the virtual nodes. If you don't enable this and create a Kubernetes, you need to run multiple CLIs to uh, to see the yeah to see the I mean to get your virtual nodes. Up. Um, guys, we'll have the host joining us shortly. I think there are some uh, issues again. So just stay with us. So yeah, uh, meanwhile, I think you can uh, probably ping in your questions. That would be really great. Okay, so Pavitra, how much time do I have? Hey, uh, Karthika, you're good to go. You have 15 more minutes. Okay, paka. Yeah. Okay, so that's the thing. So once the Kubernetes is created, probably, yeah. So, yeah, so the Kubernetes is created. I'm going to just talk about the code. Uh, hopefully, you can see my code. So you can still see my screen, right, uh, Pavitra? No. I have to share. It got disconnected. Okay, perfect. Okay, fine. So let's go to the chart versions. Okay. So I'll just show you the. Uh, um, I'll just show you the chart here. Okay. So I'll, uh, this is the YAML file for a brevity purpose. I'm going to show the scaled object here. And then uh, this is uh, just leave, a, leave it all alone. So it's basically a service deployment and a service secret and a, a scaled object, which you already know about the Helm chart. The main point here you have to know here is the node selector. Okay, so the basic, the, you need to make sure that you select a node uh, that is of virtual kubelet to make sure uh, to make sure that it runs in the Azure functions, meaning the I have, I, uh, okay, let's take a step back. Mm. Okay, so what I have done is I have created a Azure functions, which uh, runs on the uh, uh, Kubernetes after dockerizing it. So it's a very simple Azure function where you just pass a queue item and then you should be able to print the queue item. Okay, so I'm going to run this in the uh, Kubernetes and then show you how it works. Okay. Fine. So once that is done, so I'll lockerize that. And if you can see here, uh, so main thing you need to know here is this node selector, where you have to make sure that it's basically a type of virtual kubelet. And also the toleration and the taint should be on a virtual kubelet. Whenever there is a virtual kubelet that provide, if it exists, you should be actually moving your compute to that uh, well, uh, you know, computer. I'll show you. I'll show you what I meant. Okay. 
So when you see here, so in the nodes, right, you can see two nodes here. Okay. So one is the normal master node that will, that you have to any which ways pay for it for default. And this virtual node ACI will not be a, will not be, it's based in abstract layer. It just shows you there is a node, but you'll not be paying even a single penny. You'll be, it will be just sitting there. Only when, once you run a workload, it will work. I mean, it will actually start spinning the, okay, let me go and connect in your, uh, one of my, yes. So I'm going to queue up my some with some data. Let me queue it up. So product ID one and then quantity two. Okay. I'm just going to queue this up. Okay, so this is, yeah, right. So all I have to go and see is, I uh, have to see, uh, okay. I'm trying to wait for my pods to pick up. I've queued one. It'll take at least, uh, the initial pod, it'll take some time. So you can see, uh, right. So now, until now, there was no pods. Zero pods was there. Now it is actually pulling it. Now it's creating it. It's running in virtual cube, right? So you'll not be paying any amount. I'll go check here. Yeah, you can still see the data. The first part creates takes some time. Once it gets created, it will be extremely, extremely faster. Hopefully it works. Well, it doesn't take this longer, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's running. So you picked it up. So once you start pushing lots of messages, it will scan, span across. It's too fast. So it keeps on picks up and then the pod gets uh, done. 
okay so we uh, in this this is the same way and uh, we have used uh, virtual kubelet we can see here the virtual kubelet yeah so the virtual kubelet is still there it's based on linux vm okay you can even create a windows virtual kubelet and then run the same kubernetes which you have already run so those are the flexibility you have where you can handle one uh, app engine or one engine that's basically from the kubernetes so that's the good one to go so that's all from my end the demo is done so what i have done is i have actually created a elm, uh, elm chart and then i have deployed that into the uh, yaml and i have uh, replaced uh, pushed uh, content into the queue and that is picked by the keda scalar keda and then uh, virtual kubelet uh, runs the data and then it has processed it so it's very simple demo uh, meaning all you need to know understand from this is um, keda is a event driven uh, architecture uh, platform to uh, increase your compute based on the uh, number of that event comes in because the uh, horizontal pod scale pod scaler does not uh, and scale anything based on any other events it will based on the metrics the keda helps us to scale it so that hp we can use the power of hpa to scale our work needs okay uh yeah i think that's it from my end uh one thing i want to just add to it is uh just uh, uh so this is my what is that so i have basically i am uh, architect right so i have written a book uh, in uh, that is available in amazon uh, it's called developers road ahead i'll just give you two minutes overview of what it is i don't know okay okay so this is my book it's uh, right now available in amazon so when i wanted to move from my senior developer to uh, architect right i went and asked multiple people there was but there was not one place where people told me okay these are the things you need to do become an architect and i lo did lots of uh, uh, googling to understand to talk, spoke to many people but there wasn't one place where it is uh, somebody some people told go and read solid principle some said uh, uh, learn more about uh, design pattern some people said you have to know more about uh, uh new new technology that comes in but there are certain things which we need to do before even uh, learning new technology or uh, understanding those those things and it's basically 30 to 40% technical and other 60% is all communication skill positioning your positioning your uh, uh resume how to talk to your stakeholders how to get con uh, convincing your stakeholders to implement new technologies so those are the main things rather than a technical because we got after 6 years you almost get very sound with, with technical things but you don't know which how to make it more sound understand the basics what are the basics you should know so these are the things that comes up came up for me to become an architect so i thought okay i was actually doing a, i i started mentoring multiple people to become an architect and then somebody said why can't you take a seminar out of it so i did a seminar some 60 members came and then some uh, some then they asked uh, so is it okay if you can write a book then i realize okay if you write a book more people can learn from it so that is the reason i just wrote this book um, i don't get much out of this book uh, probably some 80 bucks or something out of the 600 you pay uh, all this that things goes otherwise uh, but uh, there is one seller who sells it for 500 that is okay you can check it out if you are interested you can check out that book it's pretty nice uh, make sure that you give me a uh, you can call you can call me uh, you can uh, follow me in the twitter it's karthik3030 and give me a feedback if you have any um, details to become an architect on how to become an architect please do uh, contact me i'm in linkedin now so you just go and search for karthik and vk you should be able to see me i guess it will be the first name i guess yeah still mine is the first name uh, yeah it's in linkedin so you can just check out in my linkedin profile anything anything you want any any details you want to become an architect or you're struggling to become an architect or understanding how to become an architect please do ping me bring uh, ping me i'll be happy to help you okay thank you guys for any question i can answer hey thanks a lot karthik and i think that was yeah. a really insightful session and uh, we have a couple of questions that uh, we can start with so uh, what, the first one is how is virtual kubelet implemented in non cloud uh, kubernetes environment okay super it's a very nice question uh, so we basically you need to run some kubectl commands uh, 
So you can run this kubectl commands to me uh, to get get your uh, virtual kubelets installed in your Kubernetes. Yeah, these are the commands. It will. So the, I told you right. Whenever you create a cloud, you can either select uh, select enable virtual kubelet or install it later. So that's that's the same thing you need have to do it in on prem. But I'm not sure how on prem will be that much disadvantageable because any which way you have already bought the. So, so we'll see. I mean, I, I don't see a point where virtual kubelets will be useful in on-prem. I have to uh, just think through. Yeah. Yes, thanks, Karthik, and for taking that up. Uh, we have one more question. So can these nodes be distributed across geo locations? Yes, 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 yes. You can do that. But it's based on the configuration you need to know. You need to do some more configurations in virtual kubelet, and then it, 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 it is possible. OK, awesome. Yeah, I think we have covered all the questions that we had. And uh, uh, thank you guys for joining. And thanks a lot, Karthigan, for this awesome session. Uh, for any further questions that you wanted to ask Karthigan, you can uh, ping on uh, CNC of Slack channel. CNC, uh, yeah. Yeah. Please feel free to connect me through LinkedIn also. Any questions you can ask me with respect to Kubernetes or becoming an architect, I am happy to help you. Oh, that's that's great, Karthigan. I think you'll have a lot of people like <laughs> So yeah, it was such a great session. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time, Karthik. Thank Thanks, Vantra. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. All right, I think uh, we're done with this session. So folks will be resuming the next session shortly. So stay tuned. Bye. So why can I drop, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, so I just need to because I'm not a host anymore. No? Yeah, can you can you can close the close. Okay, Fine. perfect. Thank you. Hey, all. So I'm hoping that you have enjoyed the session by Karthik and so the, the next session is going to be on understanding the cube scheduler simulator by Pravar Agarwal and um, Pravar is a DevOps engineer with six years of experience in cloud automation.